All right, Kyle. So early on in the season, particularly in the preseason, we were critical of Baker Mayfield. We were wondering what the future of Mike Evans would be an uh, impending free agent for the Buccaneers. Uh, but now, obviously, this team won a playoff game. They were within a score of going to the NFC Championship game. Are we looking at Baker Mayfield and thinking, man, is this guy about to make $40 million a year moving forward? I wouldn't go that far, but we definitely have to rethink the way that we thought about this Bucks team and thought about Baker Mayfield because we did a video preseason talking about Baker Mayfield and the Bucks quarterback battle. And the thing that I talked about, and I thought this was one of my best, like, well articulated points about like the psychology of of star athletes and what it takes to be someone like Baker Mayfield who is he hasn't been the chip on his shoulder guy he has been the put a boulder on my shoulders guy like his entire career it has been about proving the haters wrong it has been about underdog story nobody believed in me I've had to take the hard route and, and people have always doubted me and this is the first time in his career that the the doubts ended up being true about Baker Mayfield that it's like you have reached the the point of your athletic ability where you cannot be the star quarterback who just wills his team through grit and tenacity because you are six foot two and you're going up against six foot seven giants that are all smart and athletic and able to defend you in a way that makes you obsolete as a quarterback in three different locations. Baker Mayfield came out here and one more time said, fuck you to all of us who thought that Baker Mayfield needed to adjust his psychology. And we were talking about whether or not he would last as a backup in the league. And I talked about how a lot of that came down to the psychology of does he adjust from being the the ultra competitive boulder on his shoulder guy to then being the, the, the teammate backup quarterback, all that stuff. And, uh, Baker Mayfield doesn't have to worry about that anymore because he he's going to be the Bucks franchise quarterback for the next call it two, three, four years. A and Baker Mayfield is going to defy the odds and have a 10 year career as a starter in the NFL. There was kind of a weird detour in between with like half a season on the ran or I'm sorry, half a season on the Panthers. But <laughs> Baker Mayfield's going to going to yeah. have a, a 10 year career as a starter in the NFL. And if you have a 10 year career as a starter in the NFL, you are like Derek Carr like that's And that being where Baker Mayfield ends up is remarkable. Just a truly, truly incredible career. He's already hell. He's already won two playoff games. Maybe Derek Carr is selling him <laughs> a little bit short. Like, yeah, Baker Mayfield is, is incredible in terms of career arc. Yeah, he's miles ahead of Derek Carr because Derek Carr also took over a troubled franchise you know similar to what baker did with the cleveland browns and managed to turn it around into a playoff victory i do find it funny the parallels between his two playoff wins facing a struggling team from pennsylvania and pittsburgh and philadelphia that started off their seasons hot and ended up finishing poorly but hey it doesn't matter by hook or by crook you get those playoff wins regardless you go down as like a all-time performer in terms of your ability to produce in the postseason you know I was critical on Todd Bowles early on and you asked me in the group chat do I owe Todd Bowles an apology I still feel no only because they won this NFC South that was a trash NFC South and then you see the decision at the end of the Lions game where he decides not to take his time out and probably give his team like 30 seconds left to just try and do something you know right like come on Todd Bowles like really <laughs> I, <laughs> like okay. okay understand if they make the kick it's an 11 point lead and you're not coming back from that sure I get that but the Lions kicker many people have pointed out has missed kicks of that length throughout the season so maybe he misses that kick and you're still down eight points 30 seconds to drive you can make something happen I mean put Mike Evans in a jump ball situation I mean or Chris okay. Godwin. you okay. have two wide receiver ones stuff happens I mean in Baker Mayfield he does have a good arm, so he can do a Hail Mary if you need to make it happen. Todd Bowles, I still think, deserves some criticism. We'll see how the Bucks come back next year. But um, as far as Baker again, too, like, yeah, it's been a hell of a ride. Good on Baker. Um, the fact that we were even talking about him versus Kyle Trask just seems silly looking back on it. He he will get at least, like you said, that three to four year deal for sure. He's going to be in Tampa, like. I'm sure there's going to be some interest from some other teams, but I think for Baker, just stay in Tampa. I, I think that the fans like you now. They've embraced you. They know who you are. Uh, they'll treat you better than they did in Cleveland. They'll treat you better than they did in Carolina. Uh, Tampa w seems like a good area for you. Coming off, you've mentioned this before, the high of uh, winning a Super Bowl with Tom Brady. Uh, the fans are less thirsty for their next Super Bowl win, so there's less pressure there. I'm not saying there's no pressure. Teams want to win. 
players want to win. Uh, Mike Evans would like to get another ring in his career, I'm sure. Chris Godwin would like to get another ring in his career, I'm sure. But you're not like immediately, okay, next year, the Bucks, NFC contenders right now. No, you're, you're looking at them like, okay, maybe they can just keep building and building <laughs> like three to four years of Baker Mayfield's not a bad thing. And yeah, you know, I think for Baker too, like another thing that impacts his legacy is just his draft class. You know, we see Lamar Jackson, we see Josh Allen, who, although him and Baker's career success is probably parallel in terms of like uh, the wins losses relatively. Uh, we know we, that Josh we, Allen's we just know. superior talent. Miles ahead of Sam Darnold. <laughs> that was a pop, popular comp back in the day, right? Colin Coward oh, yeah, is still going sure. on about it to this day that he thought Sam Darnold was a better draft prospect than Baker Mayfield. Uh, Josh Rosen, where's that guy now? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But On a tennis yes. court somewhere? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Josh Rosen, whatever you're doing now. Uh, the the U the USXFL is starting soon. Maybe maybe he'll be out there on the whatever merged league is out there. Maybe he's not good enough for that. Who knows? Um, okay, so the Baker Mayfield thing that's interesting is like so they have probably bought themselves two years. I mean, I say they should have bought themselves two years in Tampa, but also I acknowledge that Pete Carroll just got fired by the Seahawks like one year after the magical Geno Smith season. So who knows? Maybe it's only one year, but maybe if Baker does get the $40 million contract, it'll probably be like the the Derek Carr, $37 million a year contract, where it's like it's a four-year contract, but it's really a two-year contract because all the guarantees are structured in the front. Maybe that's the deal that Baker gets this offseason is like a four year that's really a two year deal or something like that and then, and him and Bulls get two more years together to kind of build upon the success that they've had this season but you kind of hit the nail on the head when it comes to like expectations and building on this team I made this joke last week the Tampa organization is not real like they went they went eight and eight, and eight with Jameis Winston throwing 30 touchdowns and 30 interceptions swapped out a left tackle and Tom Brady and ended up going to the Super Bowl in their first year while changing like nothing else on the team. They just put in Tom Brady, put in a left tackle, went to the Super Bowl, beat Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl, which still doesn't make sense. And then two years later, they went eight and nine with Tom Brady. And then after going eight, nine with Tom Brady, they put in Baker Mayfield and went nine and eight and won a playoff game. Like nothing about this. This organization is not real. Like nothing about this team makes sense. Let's stop pretending like Tampa makes any sense. What is real is they have talent. They have playmakers. This is still a good roster. That's that's the thing that I learned from this season. This is still a good roster. Like you compare it to the Super Bowl roster. Yeah, there's okay. We don't have. AB or Namda Kinsu still on there. Obviously, we don't have Tom Brady in his relative prime, his back end prime that we saw in his early 40s. His 44 year old yeah. prime. Yeah, his 44 year old prime. Because there's at this point, I just say there's like three different primes for Tom Brady, right? <laughs> Most yeah. athletes get one prime, he gets three. Tom Brady in his back end prime, you know, obviously, those are things you lose. Baker Mayfield, even at his best, is not Tom Brady. Let's just put that out there. But at the same time, like, uh, is he comparable to, I guess, what was it last year, Tom, 45 year old Tom Brady? Okay. He was, yeah, yeah, he was better. He was better than, than last year, Tom Brady. No question. Cause with a team that everyone said would go five and 12 after Tom Brady left, they ended up making it to the playoffs with yeah. a better record than Tom Brady and beating the Eagles. Well, yeah, Rashad White, you season. know, they figured something out there. They have a good running back in Rashad White, a potentially great running back in Rashad White if he continues like he was in the back half of the season. Another big variable is can they keep Mike Evans on this roster moving forward? And I feel like they will. I feel like if they're going to resign Baker, they're going to make every effort to resign Mike Evans because Mike Evans – we talked about this. We talked about this when we were doing the video on him earlier in the year. He's one of their ring of honor type players, right? He's one of the guys that just is going to be synonymous with their franchise forever. Probably one of the greatest bucks of all time. So yeah, they want to make uh, Mike Evans finish his career there if possible. It just, what is Mike Evans desire move forward? Does he just want to uh, stay in Tampa or does he want to possibly chase another ring like what what does he look at the bucks and think of them as next year he knows he can get to the playoffs with them at the very least that's something that you can do that you can work with he knows that you could at least win a playoff game with them does he believe that you can win a championship with them they would need to have to do, do a lot more roster building around this like i don't know what the next uh 
step for them as far as like building out this roster will be. You probably maybe have to reload on defense even a little bit more. Um, you're not going to get much better than the wide receiver and combos, the running back combos they have. Still a good, decent offensive line they have there, but I mean, if there, certainly there's a talent that drops to them that they feel they can improve that line. Sure. <laughs> Mike, I, I, Mike Evans, Buffalo Bills, question mark. Mike Evans. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if Stefan Diggs is no longer there, they definitely do need a wide receiver one. I mean, most, a lot of people have thrown out Kansas City as well as a potential. Kansas, oh, Mike don't Evans don't let him go spot. there. Don't let don't let them replace MVS with Mike Evans. Don't let that happen. That's going to yeah. be dangerous for everyone involved. <laughs> that will really be scary. So it really just depends on, again, like what does Mike Evans want from the back half of his career moving forward? Because he's got the ring. If he's satisfied with one ring, he just wants to earn more money. And he feels like I've lived in Tampa for like 10 years. Let me go ahead and just stay in Tampa. Then, you know, like they might be able to bring him back on a reasonable hometown discount, potentially. You know, if he's in the market for another ring, there's going to be suitors that want Mike Evans. He's still good. He's still really good. That's what the back half of the season showed me. The Mike Evans is still elite. He's still in that top 10 of wide receivers. Like not many people are going to beat him in a jump ball situation. He's still someone that is scary and defenses have to plan around like whenever they're making their game plans. We'll see what happens there. Baker has already put it out there. You know, if I'm back here, I want Mike back here. So, hey, maybe Baker takes a little discount too to keep Mike <laughs> Evans. That would be smarter for Baker. If if I'm, I'm Baker, you know, and because Baker's on a mission to also prove some things. I might start doing a little bit of the Tom Brady strategy. You're, you know, you're going to make at least 20 million, potentially 30 million a year. But if you could take a slight discount to keep a guy like Mike Evans, do it, do it. I mean, Let, let's, let's slow your roll here. Buckaroo Baker Mayfield thinking he can come in here and be like, if I'm sticking around, I want Mike Evans back, buddy. They will give you the contract. They offer you <laughs> my guy. Let's not get too crazy here. Baker Mayfield about I'm going to demand that this player and this player come back. Cause honestly, the thing that hasn't been talked about a ton is like, I don't, I, they can kind of replace Chris Godwin. I know that's kind of crazy to think about because two years ago, he was so instrumental to what they did in the Super Bowl. But if you saw what Palmer was doing for them this season, like they, they have an opportunity to replace Chris Godwin at value and potentially use that money to address some of those shortcomings you were talking about. Maybe they get an offensive lineman. Uh, they only have one competent corner now. And Jamel Dean played an amazing game against Detroit. Oh, shout out to Jamel Dean. I know he left with an, uh, an injury in the third quarter of that game, but Jamel Dean was absolutely putting in work in that game against Detroit, like palpable how great he was playing. They need some more corners in there. Maybe maybe they take that money, bring back Mike Evans and, and try and find value at other receiver positions. I think Godwin would be the one that goes, especially because they can trade him. And if they choose to push a bunch of his dead cap money to next year, they would save like 20 million against the cap for next season. So I, I think Godwin move on from Godwin and bring back Mike Evans is the better strategy. If Tampa's going that route at the receiver position and then kind of work to address some of those issues in the passing game. Like it was so weird that Devin white essentially got benched at the end of the season this year. I thought that was really weird. They and KJ Wright was the best option they had, which when they had Levante David in his prime, like I would understand that decision, but they just went like KJ Wright just because Devin White is so bad in passing coverage. And the only reason that Devin White was so effective the year they won the Super Bowl was he's bad at stopping the run. He's great in pass coverage. And uh, I had those in reverse. He's great at pass coverage, bad at run defense, but they had the best run defense in the NFL during the Super Bowl season of 21. So Devin White could just focus on pass defense. And uh, apparently they they just bailed on Devin White altogether. So they got to work through that. The one thing that is good for them, and this will always be the, the one thing Tampa has working for them, regardless of question marks about Baker or Mike Evans or whatever, they're always going to be good at stopping the run. You know why? Because they have Vita Vea. And Vita Vea <laughs> is 360 pounds of man muscle that breaks off the line like an edge rusher. That man said, you're going to run the tush push. I say no. You know why they didn't score the tush push? Because Vita Vea said no. That man <laughs> is the most freakish body in the NFL. And I love him so much. Yeah. And they put him next to 300 pounds of man muscle in Kalijah Cansey. And now they have 700 pounds of beefcake 
blocking the run on the inside. Until that last touchdown, the Lions scored. They didn't allow a rushing touchdown in six games because of Vita Vea and Kalijah Kansi just being giant hulking men in the middle of that feet defense. So that's the one thing they'll always have going for them is they got that run defense down great. And uh, I think that's actually going to go a long way because a big reason why they ended up winning those games late in the season is because defense stepped up when the Bucks offense uh, was not. Uh, remember that 9 nothing game against the Panthers that they won? Yeah. Uh, a couple of those games at the end of the season was just our defense is going to show up and show out with Jamel Dean and 700 pounds of man muscle in the middle. And maybe we'll get enough pass rush to be able to counter teams also. So we'll see what happens. But I know that a lot of your issues get easier when you have Vita Vea in the middle, just being the most freakish bo- in a sport of freak athletes. He is the most freakish of the body types. And I in high school, I just always love bringing up in high school, he played running back. So uh, imagine trying to stand in front of that dude playing running back in, in against 16 and 17 year olds. Yeah, I mean, OK, so like projecting the box so that their best path to the playoffs on a year in, year out basis is just ultimately going to be winning their own division. Right now, I feel as though confident in saying the Bucks are still the favorite in this division as things currently stand. I still think that they're better than the Saints and they're definitely better than the Panthers for what it's worth. Yeah, I I, I don't think the Saints thing is going to work out because they don't really have much of a way to improve their roster this upcoming offseason. And I've said that um, Dennis Allen and, and Derek Carr was a two-year pairing together. And if it starts to go bad next year, they might just cut bait in the middle of the season and fire Dennis Allen and bench Derek Carr and just tank a season to try and get a draft pick <laughs> while they they reset. I, and I think put that's... in interim coach John Gruden. <laughs> so apparently oh, worked no. around their I staff. For, I forgot about that. <laughs> oh, God. Well, let's worry about that next year with the Saints. Or maybe not. Yeah. Uh, honestly, Jeff Saturday got to be an interim head coach. Just go. Well, go... You, you heard no. it here first. If it happens, it did happen on this recording. <laughs> No, my recommendation is just go let Drew Brees be interim coach for like eight weeks. Who cares? He 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 <laughs> lives down the street anyways. Just just let's do that. Let's let's do that instead. Uh, but yeah, I don't think the Saints are, are going to be very good next year. And they're you know Dennis Allen starts the season as like the coach most on the hot seat of any in the NFL. Yeah, too many uncertainties with the Falcons. Uh, if I were giving like a, a pie chart analysis, I would say like the Falcons could be anywhere from like 20% chance to win the division to like 50% chance to win the division, depending on what they do with this coaching quarterback combination. Cause they, they obviously have the, the, the six really talented players on their team that could make or break a season. So they, they have those in place. That's a, a good start to any foundation. The Panthers, oh, buddy, <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen with that team. So, yeah, yeah, I, I think you'd have to say Tampa's probably the front runner. And then the the Falcons are are in the same boat. But I think the NFC South might be putting in work towards getting to that AFC South territory. I think I think we're, we're pretty certain they're going to be the fourth seed in the NFC playoffs next year. And there's only going to be one team from the NFC South in the playoffs, right? I think that's what both of us are saying is that it's probably going to be a one probably. playoff team division. I, I don't see them sending multiple when I consider, okay, well, the West is going to send potentially multiple every year, you know, and the East is probably going to send at least two every year. So, uh, yeah. What's happening with the Eagles, you know? Uh. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. The North, hey, you know, healthy Kirk Cousins, if they continue moving forward uh packers looking good we'll get to them lions good obviously too 